A very warm welcome to the Calsoft podcast series. This is your host Mark Rodriguez. With me today I have Sagar Abhyankar. Uh, we've had Sagar on the on the show before. Uh, we welcome you back again Sagar. Hey hi Mark. Thanks so much. A uh, quick recap on uh, Sagar. Uh, he's a Scrum Alliance certified scrum master with 10 plus years of experience in testing and delivering world class products that were uh, developed using the waterfall and the agile methods. He's now a project manager at Calsoft with a focus on QA solutions. Sagar is with us today to discuss a um, topic called QA matrices, the health of the system. Sagar, we've discussed this before, but uh, to recap, the agile versus waterfall model, what are your thoughts? Okay. So what uh, what waterfall used to do earlier was you have different phases in waterfall model where one model gets completed when one phase gets completed the other one just kick starts followed by the another one so what uh, used to happen in waterfall is assume that you are at a testing phase and you realize some things need to be changed in the product mm -hmm. uh, the amount of time and effort that is spent on each of the phases goes for a toss because again you have to go back to the first phase come come down come down uh, till the time you reach your testing phase again uh so that what that, that's what uh, was the drawback with the waterfall model what agile does is in agile you can have uh, your development team uh, in in agile there is no concept as developer tester manager there is only one team development team and uh, somebody who leads or who uh, facilitates the entire uh, uh, agile through scrum is called as the scrum master so he is the person who facilitates who ensures that the ball keeps rolling as the product is being uh, developed uh, so the advantage of uh, agile versus waterfall if you ask me is that uh, the customer gets involved in your uh, software development life cycle phases uh, right from the word go uh, like for instance in waterfall model it used to happen that uh, the customer uh, used to just keep waiting for the product and uh, the amount of time and uh, effort that used to get spent on developing the product the customer used to get to see it after a significant amount of time right. whereas what agile does is in agile the customer is always involved with you into the entire uh, product development life cycle right. uh, he gets to see his product first hand so if there is any feedback if there are any suggestions if there are any announcements uh he can suggest it right away rather than waiting for months to see the product and then uh, telling the development team that oh no i wanted something else i was visioning something else so uh i would i i would personally would like to tag it as a partnership uh, affair than just a customer vendor relationship okay. uh, wherein everybody ev each and every stakeholder involved is getting involved in the entire product life cycle yeah yeah fair enough so you mentioned uh, that these teams are generally built up of a mix of people and there's no hierarchy system uh, correct define the composition of this team okay so so you have a mix of uh, m mix of skills uh, skill set uh, people uh, in your team here uh, you would have developers you would have testers you would have designers so so that's about the team structure and uh, ideally a team size uh, if you ask me for agile using scrum should be somewhere uh, ranging from say 3 to 9 Uh, however if if your team size just increases then uh, you need to divide your teams into multiple groups uh, and and carry on ca carry along because uh, when you're developing a product assume a scenario you have a 15 20 member team you just can't cut it down because agile says so uh, but then you have to find an effective way of managing your team because uh, one of the ceremonies that get uh, th that that happen in uh, scrum is the stand up so as as the name suggests it's a stand up meeting mm -hmm. uh, which means everybody is supposed to stand and not sit mm -hmm. and the precise reason for that is you are supposed to answer or ask only three questions what what did you do yesterday what are you going to do today and uh, are there any risks or impediments that you foresee uh, but if you have a larger team 15 20 member team then the stand up time goes for a toss so so what what you should uh, ideally do and if there are multiple dependencies on other scrum teams then there is a concept called as scrum of scrum uh, so what what it does is it brings the uh, scrum masters and representatives from each teams mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. uh, from another scrum team and understand what are the roadblocks or what are the impediments or what what is it that is needed to uh, take take the uh, project forward okay fair enough so anyone who is developing a product like this would uh, want to look at the reports that are being generated right 
So what are the reports generated or published from the agile way of software development testing? Correct. So the objective of any report is uh, to enable the decision makers whether it's a go or no go. Mm -hmm. Whether what they have invested in is worth in continuing in investment or not. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's just a, a crisp uh, one-liner that I can think of uh, about the reports. Uh, so as you correctly pointed out, Agile using Scrum uh, has its own reports which which get published or which gets exported out which you can share it with your customers stakeholders even with your team uh, one of the report is the burn down chart so in in agile you have in scrum you have your iterations and iterations are divided into equal or uh, equal amount of days so for instance if there is an iteration it can be in 10 working days okay. and there would be say for instance three sprints mm -hmm. so 10 working days or one, one sprint is of 10 working days and there are three sprints when 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 you have this in p place you already have something called as product backlog and in product backlog all all the features are are getting listed in the product backlog list uh, so you so your product owner is actually sharing the wish list in the product backlogs uh, from that you are actually uh, being told what is it that the product owner wants to see first uh, that gets divided during your sprint planning in your uh, during your sprint planning phase uh, and gets pulled into the iterations into the sprints and once those are there every team member should be updating its his user stories what amount of time he has spent on those user stories what amount of time is left mm -hmm. and and the beauty of agile is you can modify your your estimations here so if you say uh, a particular user story took you 10 hours is going to take you 10 hours but you have actually uh, invested about 12 hours in completing that there is a correction field wherein you can just enter uh, extra 2 hours and that would help you uh, forecast and plan uh, in in a, in a in a better way in the future so there's something called as burn down chart so burn down chart what is uh, what it does is it it shows you how quickly you and your team is burning out uh, through your customers user stories um, and there's something called as burn up chart as well so there are two reports most uh, uh, mostly widely being used is the burn down chart the only difference between burn up and burn down chart is that instead of tracking how much work is left to be done we track how much work we have completed okay. so that's the difference between burn down and burn up chart right. okay uh, you also mentioned uh, sprint velocity right Can you right. tell us a little more about this report? right so so velocity is the amount of time you your team requires to complete a particular task for a spe uh, speculated amount of time so when you s when you say you have your iterations you have 10 days of uh, a sprint and for instance you have your three sprints uh, velocity can be calculated based on story points which are assigned to user stories or people do it differently so they do a customization of the entire scrum so some people do it based on the test cases that they have written or test cases they have executed uh, so velocity is something like productivity uh, where you actually understand how much your team is able to achieve and based on velocity you can determine how much more you have to go so that the product backlog gets completed right. so it's, it's kind of uh, it, 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 so velocity trend helps you understand how much time more is required with the same uh, team compo uh, composition that you have with the um, same amount of skill set and the product backlog how much time it would take for you to complete to reach the finishing line so that's what s uh, velocity is all about and velocity trend as I told you it helps you understand how much time would it take to uh, for the same team to uh, you know cross the finishing line okay so what about defects I mean the reports for defects okay so uh, defects uh, defects uh, so 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 interestingly we need to understand how many defects we've been injecting into the system uh, what is the severity and priority of that defects and based on that you can actually understand how stable or unstable your product is or it has become uh, so th there's something called as defect trend report uh, so what defect trend report does is uh, you can actually find a trend for a period of three months six months and understand how your system has been acting behaving uh, based on those defects whether those defects are getting closed or whether those defects are getting reopened 
or new defects are getting injected so based on the defect trend report you can actually understand uh, what's the health of your application or, or your product at a given point in time and since last 6 months or 7 months how it has behaved right so based on that you can take corrective and preventive actions just to ensure that so so end goal which you would also agree with me is end goal is the defect count should go down right right Absolutely. and that's what determines the quality yeah. of the uh, product and that defect report helps us achieve uh, in much uh, better way uh, so sagar you mentioned that the defect trend the reports are generated across 3 months 6 months etc how often do you generate reports for uh, for burn down chart and sprint velocity so uh, sprint velocity is normally calculated at the end of the uh, sprint Uh, at the end of your speculated uh, s- cycle uh, but though you can start measuring it and you can keep a close watch as to uh, you are with the pace of what is being baseline uh, based on your historic uh, data uh, burn down chart also th- all the team members need to update it daily so that uh, you understand whether you are meeting the planned and the actual efforts are meeting the planned efforts or not so burn down chart you do th- a monitoring daily and then you take out the uh, report either on a daily basis or at the end of the sprint uh, and uh, to answer to your second question sprint velocity is calculated at the end of the sprint though you can monitor it continuously just to understand that okay my sprint velocity is uh, based on historic data is about 40 user users to user user points user story points and i am uh, on the 8th day of the sprint which is which constitutes a 10 day sprint i am on the 8th day and i have just burnt about 20 user stories so that would help me understand okay the velocity is getting reduced then you need to focus on why it is getting reduced are there two complex user stories is there something where clarity is not achieved that 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 brings me to an interesting concept uh, here mark if you allow me to explain that uh, in agile technically theoretically and in principle and in practice you should not pick up any user story uh, unless you have the entire clarity about it so any user story for which you don't have clarity which is not in ready state should not be picked uh, okay so so that's the bottom line that unless and until you your team everybody who's working around that user story have a clarity and it's marked as ready and to be worked on state uh, it should not be picked up so that's not the ideal way to go about it okay now to put everything in context uh, this this uh, this helps us understand what is happening in the industry do you think there are going to be any further advancements in um, in the uh, agile way of software development testing absolutely uh, so automation being one of the key uh, areas we can introduce automation in much uh, earlier stage than being introduced at a later stage so conventionally what used to happen was uh, people used to wait for the entry criteria of the functional automation being met they used to wait till the product used to be stable and then start thinking about automation kick off the frameworks so the amount of time and effort that used to be spent and the returns that used to be uh, fetched from the automation was on a higher side so on e- on advocating agile i feel what you can do is you can have a uh, parallel approach where you can actually inject your test automation during your actual product development uh get in sync with your developers designers understand uh what objects what properties they are going to use start thinking about the test automation framework design uh, and parallelly start automating it identify those scenarios and start automating it right. uh, of course we have to understand the fact that agile talks about change about uh, about evolving so there is there, there are going to be times when even if even if you introduce automation the amount of rework can be on a higher side but i think that that's a fair call that we can take even if you define the framework m- with minimal changes you can actually reap much benefits much more faster than what you could do uh, other ways okay fair enough so i uh, that ends our discussion for today uh, sagar it was great to have you with us we hope to see you once again thanks mark likewise for our listeners uh, if you have any feedback about our podcast or what you'd like to listen to next uh, you can reach out to us at marketing@calsoftinc.com that email address again is marketing@calsoftinc.com thank you and have a great day bye bye